I'm here with Dr. Romano to discuss some sugar chemistry. Hi, how are you? I want to discuss a question on carbohydrates that you're going to be needing to do for the DAT exam. Let's have a look here. I give you a molecule called alpha D mannose and it says to consider it. And I gave you what's called the open chain form. And what I want to first do is to draw what's called the Hayworth and the chair forms. More than 99% of the sugars will exist in what we call the ring form. So what we need to do is to go from the open form into what we call this ring form. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to number the carbon starting at the carbonyl group. So we have one through six. Now this carbon here is chiral, this is chiral, this is chiral, and this is chiral. So we have two to the fourth or we have 16 possible stereoisomers, this one being mannose. You can have other stereoisomers if you change the positions. For instance, if carbon three and carbon four ended up having the OH on the right side, on the left side, and this is on the opposite side, you would have what we call galactose. So as you can see, you can have different types of sugars. So there were 16 possible stereoisomers. The first thing I would do is I would draw a pyranose. A pyranose is a six-membered ring. Now I'm gonna show you a nice trick. First of all, the carbon that's furthest away from the carbonyl that's chiral. If the OH is on the right side, that means that this is gonna be a D sugar. A D sugar is when the chiral carbon furthest from the carbonyl group is on the right side. That's how you can tell it's a D sugar. And for sugars, if the OH is on the left side, it would have an S configuration. So this is an S, this is an S, this is an R, and this is an R. That's a gem for the DAT that you can hit that aligning speed. What I do is to build this, I use a little trick called Dr. Lou. Now, Dr. Lou is going to be a trick for carbons two, carbons three, and carbons four. What does Dr. Lou mean? Dr. Lou means down is to the right and left is up. So what we're going to do is let's look here. It says alpha. Because they want alpha, that means you go to position one, which is right here, and the OH is pointing in the down position. If it was pointing upwards, that would be beta. So carbon number one tells you if it's alpha or beta. And remember, alpha and beta are called atomers. Short back question for the dat. The next thing is I look at carbon two and I look at carbon three, they're both on the left. Left is up. So what I do is I go up, up, and now we go to carbon four. Carbon four, the OH is down. Down means right. So it, because it's on the right, means you're gonna push it down. All right. Carbon number five, which is right here, I'll color it in, that's this carbon right here. So you don't worry about the OH and carbon five because that was my connecting link. The last thing is if it's a D sugar, and it is, th this whole group, gets placed above the plane of the ring, like such. If it was an L sugar, it would have been placed going down. Now, to go from the Hayworth into the chair form, all you do is basically transcribe what you see. This is the H at one, the OH is underneath. You go to position two, the OH is above, like this. And then position number three, OH is up. Position number four, OH is down. And then finally, this is up, like such. Now, that takes care of how you would convert from one formula into another. The next thing to tell if it's a reducing sugar, you're gonna locate the hemiacetyl group and see if it exists. And as you can see, right here is a hemiacetyl group. It's half alcohol and half ether. The minute you see it's a hemiacetyl group, it's a slam dunk. It's a reducing sugar. Now, what I mean by a reducing sugar means it would give a positive Tollens test, it would give a positive Fellings test, 
and a positive Benedict's test. So those are the three tests for our sugars, and you know it's a reducing sugar if that hemiacetyl group is present. Yes, it would undergo muter rotation. If it's a reducing sugar, it will, go, it will undergo this phenomenon called muter rotation, which means if you had a pure sample of, say, the alpha isomer, and you placed it in solution, and you come back a few hours later, what would happen is you would see that the rotation changes to an equilibrium value. And this change in the rotation over time to establish the equilibrium between the open chain and the alpha and beta forms is called muter rotation. I hope this helps. We got some really great questions on this in the Dat Destroyer. But if you can do this, you'll sail through the Dat Destroyer questions. All right, good day to you. Bye-bye.